appreciate you being here today. I know we've had a, a good service this morning. Our senior adults had a great time. And, uh, just a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Ain't you glad to be back in God's house? Amen. 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 Uh, is anybody at this time, before we get started, do you have any announcements uh, that we need to do beforehand? Uh, I want to mention Juana on Wednesday night. John, do you want to go ahead and say? Uh, we're doing a modified Juana uh, on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, new time started at 6. Got to do with weather permitting everything outside uh, from 6 to 7.30. Uh, we will not be able to run the van, though, so we will require you to bring your kids and pick them up. So from 6 to 7.30. And we'll, we will try to do a small meal. <coughs> And also next Sunday, which I talked with Senior Adult, we're going to try this again next Sunday. So pass the word. Uh, I think they enjoyed it. It'll be at 9.30 and 11. But I do appreciate you being here. Uh, I, I know uh, we're just thankful to be in God's house. Has anybody got a prayer request before we get going? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray with his request. Anybody got an unspoken request for our raise of hand? We also had other requests mentioned in the earlier service. Uh, let's just bow our head and let's pray over these requests. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, God, for all that you do. Lord, we thank you that you're uh, there for us, Lord. And we come to you, God, with all these many requests. Lord, you know the need of each one. Lord, I pray for us uh, through this service, God, if there's anyone here, God, that doesn't know you, Lord, and say to God, they would come to know you. God, we... Thank you again for allowing us in your house. We just want to praise and worship you. Uh, forgive us when we fit in fall short. Lord, I pray for all the unspoken requests. I raise a hand, God. You know the need of each one. So, Lord, we just pray that you would uh, be with each, each family, each person represented here today. And, God, we just give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, let's all, uh, if you'd like to stand, you sit in. If you'd like to, I was about to say stand up. But, uh, in, uh, Number 407 in the book. I don't have any hymnals. We got the words on the screen. Let's sing the call C Lewis. Yeah, we'll do all three. If you like to sing it again, let's sing it.
I'll take up the offering. Uh, during the service, but after the service, we'll have a plate back there at the back on the way out. Kind of the way we done it, I guess, in the drive-in service, but y'all keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to sing a song now. Look on the screen. Uh, it's called I'll Fly Away. I know I grew up on the red back end. I don't know if y'all did or not, but then I love this song. Uh, and let's all sing it. You can stay seated as we sing it. I'll fly away.
And if we don't have Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, it's hell. It's either heaven or hell. And we've got to, to know that's our future. And, and the things around us today, it's, it's hard for us maybe to deal with some difficulties we, we're going through. But knowing that when it's all said and done, you know, like a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, what's going to matter? What is going to matter? It's going to be heaven and hell. Amen. It's going to matter. But we see the believer's past and get into Ephesians chapter 2, getting ahead of myself, I guess. But Ephesians chapter 2, uh, we're going to read verse uh, 1 through 13. Uh, again, I appreciate you being here. I, I love you. Uh, and I, I tell you what, God is it, it's really, it's just been a good God. I just, I cannot thank him enough for, for what he's done. But today, we're going to look at the believer's past. We're going to look at the believer's present. And we're going to look at the believer's future. Uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, we see the word and. Notice and. And actually, when you see and between two chapters, it, it's a continuation of, of the thought of the first chapter. And Paul has been telling about the tremendous power that Jesus uh, was raised from the dead. And that same power makes us, uh, when we were dead in trespasses and sin, it makes us alive in Christ. That takes power. That takes resurrection power. This power will be uh, displayed by the church. We are the church because we know that going forward that the church is the body of Christ in this world. And he will lift us out of spiritual darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We, we know that. But in Ephesians chapter 2 and looking at, at what he's talked about there in chapter 1, now he's, he's continuing this. But notice the believer. The believer. I'm talking about he, he's reminding the believer of uh, their past. And, and notice in verse 1 it says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin." Were any time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus and unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, in Christ, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh, or made near, by the blood of Christ. The believers past, present, and future. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you that you've allowed us to come to your house and worship the Spirit of truth. Lord, I pray for each soul here, God. That, uh, Lord, you know their hearts, you know their life, God. And, and God, you know, uh, Lord, even in the, the first service, God, you know everybody that was here, every need that we have, God. And I pray today, I don't know it all. I don't know what the need may be. But God, we know you can work a work in somebody's life here this morning. Lord, I pray for salvation, God. They will just give their all to you. God, we're thankful that you're the God that still saves, God. You're the one that's there for us uh, through the difficult times, God. We know that as we look back and, and review our life, God, a lot of it's hard. God, we pray, thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you, God, for uh, just Jesus Christ sending the red cross for me. Lord, thank you for thinking of me. And, and I don't deserve nothing, God. I don't deserve your grace or your mercy, Lord. None of us do. Lord, I pray right now if this is the last message we preach, God. I pray that you'd be within it. God, that you just give me a fresh anointing from on, on high. 
God, to hide behind the cross, Lord, and, and I just pray that everything that's done today, God, will be for your glory and honor. We praise and worship you. Lord, you're the one, God, we need to lift up. And God, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. But as we look at this scripture that I've talked about, you know, I started thinking also about church in general. I know the last few weeks has been different, has it not? We've, we've uh, seen church on Facebook and, and uh, those type of things, and even our drive-in services. Who would ever thought would have had, you know, drive-in service? And uh, it, it's different. But, you know, I started thinking about this as we look to the believer and, and, and really try to get a newfound uh, appreciation on what God has done, what God has delivered us from. You know, have we took church? You know, did we get to a point in March that we just went through the motions? That we just went through a ritual? That we just did it because, hey, you know, we just kind of went through the motions. And there have been times in my life uh, that I've walked in a church house door, I've sat on a pew, and, and I just went through the motions. My mind wasn't on anything spiritual. And that's not the way to live our life. We've got to get back in God's Word, His promises. And today, you know, I pray we're not getting to that point where we're just going through the motions, going through a ritual. You know, God can be alive in our heart and life. And, and, and sometimes I think, this is me, and I said this earlier, and you may disagree with me on this, but I think as Christians a lot of times, and I speak on the preachers, I think we honestly forget where we come from. We forget, hey, God miraculously delivered us from sin. God saved our soul. And we forget that. And we run across people who think they're above sin. That ain't that. We all, at some point in time, We've had to come before Him because we know that all of sin comes short of the glory of God. We know it's only through Him that we can be saved. But today, as we look at the believers' past and uh, Christ's present future, I want to remind us that we've got something to be thankful for because we all have had a past. We've all been lost. But thank God, if you're a believer, if you know Jesus Christ, you, you, you know, we, we know we're saved. We know heaven's our home, no matter what happens. And if we're lost, today can be the day. That you accept him. But as we look to our past, and a lot of times in our in our heart and life, it's a it, it's a dark review sometimes. You know, to look back. And we don't need to do that, we need to look forward. And, but but to think about our time before we knew Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The first verse it says, and you happy quickened, which that means made alive, give life. We'll get to that a little later. But notice it says, who were dead in trespasses and sin. We were without life. We were without life. We were spiritually dead to God and buried in the graves of trespasses and sin. Now dead, uh, I, I shared it with the, the, the first service, but I went back and I like looking at the Greek of, of these words. I preach out of King James a lot. And, and, uh, but that word dead, it's kind, of, it's kind of humorous when you look up the word, the Greek word for that. You know what the meaning is? Dead. <laughs> You know, literally dead. It, it said literally dead. I thought, hey, I, man, I'll tell you, what, I don't have to be very smart to know that. That means dead. You're dead. You're literally dead. In trespasses and sin. In, in trespasses, uh, it refers back to, to error. It refers back to sin. Uh, all the, the thing, transgression. Uh, all, and then we see the word sin, which a lot of times with sin, people may not know exactly what that means. That just means missing the mark. Because God has set the standard. You know, it's whether we're hitting hitting the mark or not. And so again, we all have had trespasses. We've been dead in trespasses and sin. You know why? Because none of us have lived life perfect. The only one that done it was who? Jesus Christ. Jesus did it. We also see in verse 2 that we were without strength. Basically that we were carried away by the current of the world's influences and we were without power. Basically, before we knew Christ, we were doing the devil's work and, and Satan and energy. And, and we even see where it said, uh, we're in time past, he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of obedience. And you say, you're saying Satan has power? That's what it talks about there. Well, if you turn over to Ephesians chapter 6 and read in verse 11, listen to this. Because it's talking to the Christian. We, we know that there's spiritual warfare. And it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the willies of the wiles of the devil, which that means schemes. It says in verse 12, listen, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we see that the devil, and, and, and where we were at before we knew Christ, we were without strength, without him. As we read on down in verse 12, we see that we were also without Christ. If you read that chapter, and I know you may have come across uncircumcision and, and circumcision, that's making a reference to Eph the church at Ephesus. They were largely a, 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 a band of people that were called Gentiles. Uh, they was also a, a small colony of Jews there, and, and they referred to the Gentiles as uncircumcision, and they referred to uh, the Jews as circumcision. But as you move along in verse 12, we see... Uh, it is at that, at that which uh, you were without Christ. So not only without life, without strength, but we were without Christ. Uh, all that, that Christ stands for in our lives at that time had no existence in our life. And what happened before we got saved, we, we had to move our, our life to God's standard. Also we see in verse 12, uh, because it makes mentions of uh, strangers from the covenants of promise. Now you know as a and the, the children of Israel back in the Old Testament, they had promises. Uh, and, and, you know, that was specific for them. The Gentiles uh, could participate there. But notice, uh, and that's what it makes mention there, when it talks about them being strangers from the covenants of, of promise. But also, as a Christian, you know, we didn't have any promises. Uh, as, excuse me, the lost person. It is said that there's over 30,000 promises in God's Word. But not one for the man who is against God. Now, we got the promise that we can get saved, but there's not a promise there if you do not know him. And, and even in uh, James chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy is the enemy of God. The Christless soul sees no value to the promises. But nothing that he's promised can be yours till he becomes your Lord and your Savior. Also we see it mentioned in verse 12, having no hope. Before we come to know Christ, the believer had no hope. Being without a promise, they are without hope. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, it says a lot, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life is the only way. But, but at that time, we were without Christ, so we couldn't come to the Father in our own way. We couldn't come with our own deeds. We couldn't come with our own works. Because Jesus Christ, he says, I am the way. I'm the only way. Now, there's people today that tell you there's, there's millions of ways and different ways to get to God. There's only one way to get there, and that's through Jesus Christ and what he's done in our life. And that's the hope that we can depend on. There's not more than one way. There's only one way. I want you to look at John chapter 3. And I said this this morning. A lot of times we, we read John 3, 16. And, and, and that's one of the most quotable uh, verses in Scripture, one of my favorite verses in Scripture. Uh, in, in, in John uh, 3, 16, it says, For God... So loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now if you look at that, at that scripture there, the very middle word in that verse is Son. S-O-N. I think it's 25 words, I think 12 on each side, but that middle word is the Son. Salvation, everything that's going on, it revolves around the S-O-N and the Son. We'll go on to read, because we're talking about having no hope, and having no hope. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, who shall believe him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In verse 18, it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. That word condemned there in the Greek means decided to try to, to go to law. It means basically to be sentenced. 
is what that means. To be sinless. To be sinless. But notice it says, But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Being sinless. Me and Shelly, she watches, I, I, I've said this a good bit, I shared it with an earlier service. Uh, she watches shows like Dateline and things like that make you think. And, and, you, and a lot of times you'll see uh, corrupt judges, corrupt cops, that kind of thing. They will, they will actually do some things wrong and they'll, they'll actually convict somebody or send somebody to prison that, that, it, that had no, nothing to do with what was going on around them. And, and I started thinking about this. There's, there's people, and, and we even saw some shows where they were in there for a long period of time and got out because things had changed and some more things had come out. But, but they had seen innocent people there while the guilty were still roaming the streets and, and in the world. And I started thinking about this as far as a, a just God and, and a God that's above all, Lord, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. You know, He's the one that's got the final authority. There is no way when I leave this walks of life that I can say, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be sentenced because, you know, I'm a good person. I, I'm not going to be sentenced because, you know, I went to church all my life. You know, I was there Sunday morning, Sunday night, and we easy. Went to vacation Bible school, did this, that, and the other. You know, there's there's nothing that, that he, he'll know exactly where we're at in our life. And he'll know our condition. There ain't going to be no fooling him. There's no meaning fooling him. Telling a lie to get off something. He's going to know, but the thing is, when we think about being sentenced and think about that word condemn, and when we talk about having no hope, it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. If you believe in him, you're not going to be condemned. You're not going to be sentenced. You're not going to, but it says that the he that believeth not is condemned already. And, and notice why. Notice why. It says, Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's Jesus. Amen? Jesus. That's the reason why. I'll say this, and I, I don't know why I couldn't let share it in first service, but Shelly watches these shows, and, and this, this is kind of a little joke, I tell you. It's, just, it's a true story. We were watching one on Dateline, and she had brought up some garbage. You know, the guys have to take out the garbage from the garbage can. And she brought it to the door, and she said, now, when it gets to a commercial, I take this garbage out and put it in the garbage can. Well, you know how guys are. You know, it goes from commercial to commercial, and all of a sudden the show's ended, and she's like, you got to take this garbage out. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't know you want me to. You know, I, I, I had it selected here, I guess you could say. Well, it was, ten, it was around 10 o'clock when the show was over with, and we was about to go to bed, and I, I walked out there in the dark. And, and the show we were watching, it was somebody had ambushed somebody uh, <laughs> yeah, outside their garage. I don't have a garage, but they ambushed somebody and hit them in the back of the head and all this kind of stuff. So what's funny is I got the garbage and as soon as I walked out the door, I got out in the in the dark and I thought, oh my goodness. You know, I started looking around. And I, and I didn't, didn't think that I really thought that would happen. But, <laughs> but uh, I got to thinking, I, I, I went back in, I thought about that. I thought, you know, that mature guy was going on his, his merry way and all of a sudden he got hit in the back of the head. Here I am going out there. And I, I made me think a little bit because uh, you know how those shows do. Well, I come back in and she's getting ready for bed and I said, you know what? I said, it really worried me there for a minute. Because I thought I was going to walk out there and get hit in the back of the head. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, she thought I was serious. I was joking. But I, I got to thinking about that. It, it, was, a, it was a big laugh. But, uh, but for a moment there, I thought, man, he, he's just walking out there like I would. And you know, get hit in the back of the head. But, but the thing is, you know, when we look at condemnation, you know, in the past, you know, if we don't know Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the key to it all. I mean, you've got to know him. You can't even know Brother Wayne. You can't say, hey, I know, I know the pastor town of First Baptist Church. I know Brother Wayne. That ain't going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Hey, my mom and dad, did, it ain't going to get you anywhere. It's your relationship with Jesus Christ, having no hope. We also see that, with, and, and going back to Ephesians chapter 2, uh, in verse 12, it says, having no hope and without God in the world. You know, the evidence is that we see of his wisdom and power, you know, in the world, you know, it was loved by God. And he sent Jesus here. You know, Jesus lived. He loved. He died to save sinners. We read that in, in John chapter uh, 3, verse 16. 
And then we also know, you know, through this, that, that some of us, this is our past. This is our past. There was one time that Brother Wayne Page, I, I'll point it myself, as your pastor, I was without life. I was without life. I was without strength. I was without Christ. I was without, without promise. I had no hope. But then guess what? At a point in my life, well, I, I kneeled down and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believed on Him. That's the key to it all. Amen. So as we look at the present here, as we look at the present in the believer, but now in Christ, now in Christ, look at verse 1. And you hath He quickened. Hath He quickened. If you got a King James Version Bible there, you'll notice that's in italics, if you do. Um, and that meant they kind of went behind and they added that to kind of help you be able to understand the verse. But that word quicken there means to be made alive. It means to give life. You are quickened. The Holy Spirit of God hath breathed into you the breath of new life. Now your eyes have been opened to the mysteries and the promises of eternal life and that reality. And the darkness has passed and true light now shines. That's the only way you're going to make it is to be made alive, to be to, to have that life that only He can give. And, and even in churches, you know, I pray through all of this is going on that we will see a mighty revival in the town of Alabama. I pray we see it all over Walker County. Uh, I know even the crusade, you know, Satan is, even through this COVID-19, it's postponed, but God is still going to work a work in Walker County, Alabama. Amen. Because Jesus is, is the one we've got to trust in. But even in the word, in Psalm 119, verse 25, it says, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. It says, Quicken thou me according to thy word. Now, quicken, you know, it meant, meant, you know, made alive, give life. But also here we see where revival takes place. That we can trust, it says, Quicken thou me, that means revive me according to thy word. And does revival come just because you have a week-long meeting, a few special services or anything like that? Is that, that where revival comes from? You know where revival comes from? It's right here in God's Word. Amen. If you want revival in your life, get your nose in God's Word and read it for yourself. Don't just have it for one hour on a Sunday or Sunday night or even Wednesday. Get in God's Word daily. Get in God's Word and, and, and pray the Word. And I guarantee you, he will revive you through his word. In the word of God, he gives life. Not only are we made alive, who was then the trespassing and sin. In verse 13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you sometimes were far off or made nigh. Now we're made nigh. Now we're made near. Christ has been trusted. And he who died, we see the just for the unjust, has brought us to God. In 1 Peter 3 and 18, it says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened, there you go, there's that word again, by the Spirit, made alive by the Spirit. The sins that separate have been put away. We now have fellowship of being reconciled. I know even in James chapter 4, I read verse 4 earlier, 7 and 8. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You know, I, I know Satan has got his schemes. I know Satan has limited power. One day after a while, he's going to be thrown into a lake of fire. I know Satan is, is definitely trying to tear down uh, us and tear down the church and tear down Christians and, and all these different things. But it talks about drawing nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to us. We've got we to gotta crave him. And that's what's great about the presence of the believer. We can draw near to him. We also see in Ephesians 2, verse 6, that we're raised together with Christ. In the, in the purpose of God, we're one with Him in the cross. 
And we share in his resurrection, his life, and the power. We also see in verse 6 that we're seated together with him in the heavenlies. You know, his last words on earth when he was put to death, he said what? Three words. It is finished. He didn't say, I am finished. It, you know, he said, it is finished. And what he's making reference to is salvation was finished. And, and the plan that God uh, did, it, and we see that here. Then we see that he ascended to the Father, right hand, and sat down. And we see a privilege that we have to rest in the work that he did for us. And that's something we can be thankful for. We also see that we're his workmanship. It's all his doing. It ain't nothing to do with you or I. And even in Philippians, chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. It's all about him, not about us. And even if you look at, at a verse 8, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. I mean, Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is all his doing. It's God, nothing about us. So, what do you see today in the present? We look to the past. Today is the present. What do you see? Do you, do you see Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, you can make that sure today. But as we look to the future, in this pre, you know, in, in the present, we have seen much of God's kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, and His saving, and His keeping, uh, satisfying fullness. But in the days to come, we shall all be witnesses to the glory that was to follow. When the Lord Himself shall appear, and when all His redeemed shall be called together to meet Him. But we'll be heirs of God. We shall then have entered into that glorious inheritance. What God has in store for each one of us. Notice in verse 4, I'm going to close with this. Verse 4, even verses 8 through 9 that I just read. What is the first two words in that verse? But God. But God. Now Wayne was a sorry low down sinner. But God. Miraculously saved my life. When anything I deserved, it was God. All God. Amen? Amen. Go with me. It was God. But God. But it says, who is rich in mercy? Mercy is when he spares us from bad things that we deserve. I deserve hell. I don't deserve to be able to call myself a Christian. And even in verse 8, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Grace is when God gives us good things that we don't deserve. Even grace, if you want to think about it further to try to remind yourself, grace using G-R-A-C-E means God redeemed at Christ's expense. That's grace. What God has done, he's paid that price. And you may be sitting there and you think, I don't understand why God would send his only son. Why would he do this just for me? Why would it? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, in closing, I'm just going to share something with you. And uh, how many of y'all ever had a flat tire? Everybody? Pretty much? Low tire, you get in the car and it's low. What do you do? You have to put some air in your tire, change it, something like that. And, and, and this last week, we had that problem. Shelly's like, I think we got a low tire. Yeah, you do. Put some air in the tire. Check it a day or two later. Guess what? It's going down. So that tells us that something's in the tire, right? And, and uh, I'll never forget, uh, you know, I kept thinking about it, what to do. And, and tires are expensive, y'all know. Just pray that something they fix real quickly. Um, but how many of y'all ever looked at a flat tire, tire or a 
uh, low tire is a blessing. You know, a lot of times you don't look at it like that. It's always something, but it, it's, it's taught me something. There's a place called Kathy's Tires in Crawford Springs, and, and my dad had, had done business with them in the past, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to call them. I had to call them because of COVID-19 to schedule an appointment so they could put your vehicle in there, close the door, that kind of thing. So I called at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, they said, you live close by? I said, yeah, I live fairly close. Can you be here by 9? Yeah, I'll be there by 9. I remember pulling up, and I left it low where they could tell which tire it was. And so when I got there, they 57, looked down, I thought, I'm going to wait till 9. Because they told me to honk the horn, let them know I was there. So I'm waiting till 9. Well, before I honk the horn, he, he come on out the door. So I got outside and showed him the tire and, and showed him where, you know, I, I know it's got a leak, it just don't know where. Uh, and I, I really, uh, you know, I just, I just tell him. And, and what's funny, before I went up there, I failed to mention this. I looked at my billfold. It's kind of like it is this morning. I didn't have a, I didn't have a dollar one in my pocket. Uh, I had my debit card, but at the time, I didn't know. I said, I don't know for sure if they take debit card or not. So I knew it should be less than $10, but I asked Shelly, I said, I did whatever her husband does. Hey, baby, you got any money? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I went to pick up my keys, and there was a $10 bill sitting there on my keys. So I thought, well, it's really good. This is going to be less than that. I guess y'all can relate to that, those that are married. But I, I had, uh, I, on the way there, had $10 in my pocket. And I'd already told my dad, had referred me, they had used them before. Uh, and I even... I had, had a commentary. I've been studying in, in Ephesians, and uh, I had I got a J. Vernon McGee through the Bible commentary that I read a lot, and I, I love to hear him uh, hear his commentary on the Bible. Uh, but I had that in my hand. I had a little pencil too in there. I was reading and, and, and making some notes in, in the in my commentary. Well, I after he told me to come in, he told me to pull in the, the Bay Area, and then he, you know they told me I had to sit outside. There was, a, there was a picnic table with an uh, umbrella there. So long story short, there I was. I, I took that Bible out, or Bible commentary, and I was sitting there on there, and I was reading it, and I was studying. Because I had about 30 minutes there that I could, uh, you know, get some study. In, I thought, I'd be, and it was a beautiful day, and that kind of thing. Well, what was crazy about it after it was all said and done, uh, he come out, they, they opened the garage door, and he come out there, and the first thing he asked me was, he said, you ain't one to, to uh, have one price in I mean, I, uh, what a, what a, okay, have one price. You want, and I thought, I didn't know how much it was going to cost, but, but I sat there while I was studying, and I thought, you know what, I just hope it's under $10. And I thought, I hope it's under $10, because I hate to pull my debit card out, y'all know how that is. I said, I hope it's under $10, because I already made my mind, if it's $7, $8, I was going to give a 10 and just call it in. And, uh, but I was hoping that they'd have used a debit card because I didn't know if they had set up that way. Well, they come out the door and the first thing they say, you ain't going to have on price, are you? And I think, oh my goodness, and there we go. I didn't know. I a big tire. I didn't know for sure what was going to happen. And I said, no, I don't reckon so. I don't think so. He said, well, we normally charge $8 to do what we've done today. Oh, when I heard that, I was like, okay, great. You know, I'm good to go right now. He said, but, he said, uh, we know you're bad. Because your dad referred you, we're taking off five dollars. Okay, three dollars, man. I said three dollars, man. That's awesome. He said, but also too, we saw you got out of your car with your Bible in your hand. We're gonna knock off another five dollars. I'm like, okay. And so he reached in his pocket. It was up here. He said, so you two dollars. And I was like, man, I take that. This is actually two dollars you were getting. I said, "Thank you." He said, "Man, no, we want to be a blessing. This is for you. We owe it to you." And I thought, "Man." So I, I went ahead and took it. I thought, "Man, it's, it's such a blessing." And, and I just sat in the car and I'm like, "Here I was worried about having enough money to pay for it. Here I come home instead of having ten, I'm just to give Shelly twelve dollars." You know? <laughs> and uh, so I walk in, I give her twelve dollars, and then later on when I cut the grass, I told her to give me back the two. Uh, I, I, yeah. I said, hey, I, I, I earned that. You know, I but uh, I, I gave it to her. I said, I want this because I was going to use it this morning. The more I kept mowing my grass, it just kind of hit me. But I thought, I ain't that the way it is with God. Because I, I came home, and the first thing I did, I told Shelly, I said, You ain't going to believe this. I said, They paid me $2 to fix my tire. What do you say? 
You're lying. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> you're lying. I said, you're lying. She said, no, I'm telling the truth. And then she said, that don't make a bit of sense. Because that's your word. And I thought to myself, after I got the thing up, I said, you know, that's exactly the way it is with the plan of salvation and God. We think that it doesn't make a bit of sense how God can give his only begotten son to live a life on earth to be treated the way he was treated and to be that sacrifice on the cross because he was without sin. And he took my sin to that cross. That guy could easily tell me, free of charge. I mean, that, and free, I mean, that, salvation's free. I mean, everything you've done is free of charge. He could have said, man, it's free. But I started looking at these $2. And I thought, you know what? That's just like the way it is with God, too. You know, we got salvation. But I thought, this is heaven. And this is that land. It's no more sorrow, no more heartache, no more tears. And I thought, just like God, it's just above and beyond what we could imagine. And to you, you may be sitting there thinking, this does not make a bit of sense why God would do that. But I'm telling you, God paid the price. Not only paid the price, but he went above and beyond. And he's prepared for you a home in heaven. And all you got to do is believe in Jesus. Trust him as your Lord and Savior. Let's bow our head. And uh, while we do, as your heads are bowed, bow, if God has spoken to your heart about being saved this morning, you just raise your hand, put it right back down. I don't want to embarrass you. We're trying to keep our social distancing with our, uh, with our invitation card. Let's bow our heads for an invitation. God, we just thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would just do a mighty work in this church. Pray, God, whatever the need may be. May just be re being reminded of what you've done for us, God. I pray as we bow our heads that we just pray to you where we're at. And if we have a need, God, we pray you supply us. I pray help us draw an eye to you. God, we know if we draw an eye to you, you'll draw an eye to us. And I pray that we're not just going through the motions, not just going through the rituals. God, that we realize the price that you paid to give us eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Shelly, please, keep your head back.